the rain is pouring as Lithuania and Hungary form up to fight this epic battle for our entertainment. Hey what up guys, it's Fish here and my name is Jackie Fish and welcome to this awesome online battle on the Medieval Kingdom mod for Total War Attila. As I said, we have uh, Lithuania, which is what uh, the army I'm commanding, and up against us is Haxa the Hunter commanding, as, uh, commanding the Hungarians, who is uh, currently on top of this kind of mini slope, I guess. I wouldn't really call it a hill. It's more of a slope. But yes, this is an awesome battle. I just fought it against Haxo. We wanted to try and bring a few weaker units into this battle, so not just bring the super elite units. So because of that, you'll see a few more like lightly armored troops that you don't normally get to see too much in these large battles because as i as i said it was epic we do have around about yeah almost 9000 men fighting in this battle so yeah it should definitely definitely be awesome we also tried to create more dense formations as well just to make it a bit more interesting because normally i feel like we stretch out our battles too much so we tried to try and keep the units a bit closer together so that we have reserves and stuff like that to pour into the front line when it is needed so i'll run through the army comps now if you want to skip this feel free to click the skip and in the top left corner or annotation in the top left corner that should bring you straight to the battle but for those of you who want to see what everyone's bringing then this is for you so on my front line on my lithuanian uh, on my lithuanian army i have two units of these lithuanian archers again these archers are pretty good in melee combat there they're somewhat heavily armored and that's kind of a reason i brought them so that if i do start seeing gaps in my front line because we are against hungary which have amazing pavese infantry if I do start seeing gaps in my line, I can kind of fill them with archers if needs be. Then behind that, I have four units of these noble swordsmen. These guys are my second best infantry, I believe, and they actually carry a, a javelin around with them as well, which you can't actually see right now, but they do actually have some throwing weapons as well, which is kind of cool. Making them a little bit stronger because if they're, you know, defending, they can throw their javelins and there's not as many enemies as there would be if they didn't have them. So they're pretty good, you know, nothing super amazing, but they can definitely hold their own in the melee combat uh for sure especially if they form formations as well if they form like shield wall they're really good then behind that i have my best my creme de la creme of the lithuanian infantry i have like six units of these armored infantry so this is the main core of my infantry build here uh really really strong oh, again i love their shields i think that's really unique and i haven't played lithuania for a while so that's always awesome then behind that i have four units of these axemen these guys aren't that great However, they're cheap. They only cost me 500 gold, whereas my heavy infantry cost me like a thousand. So about half the cost, and they can definitely be an annoyance, uh, at least just you know filling gaps or uh, throwing their javelins in the side of enemies. They can be pretty strong indeed. Then over on my flanks, I have uh, two units of Baltic spearmen, uh, one on this side and one on the other side. I really like how they have like some really good shields. Like some some of these shields are the shields that my armored swordsmen have, and then some just have kind of utter crap. So they're kind of like a mismatch of, of good and bad, but they're, they're pretty easy. They're gonna die pretty quickly They're more just here for like a, a screen to help out in cavalry fights and they're quite fast Then behind them I have four units of armored spearmen two on this flank and two on my other flank These guys are again my elite spearmen super heavily armored uh, awesome shields These dudes are pretty sturdy indeed. I'm definitely gonna be using them to help me try and win the cavalry engagements And behind that I have two units of armored cavalry Again, basically just my, my mounted swordsmen, but they look they look really, really cool. Really, really cool. I like that indeed, especially with the rain as well. It's going to be an awesome battle. Then, obviously, I have my general over here. Actually armed with an axe. That's kind of cool that his bodyguard's got axes instead of swords. That's really, really cool. Really cool. I like that. And obviously, there's my general right there with his crown upon his head in heavy armor and chainmail. Then finally, over here, I have two units of boyars. These are kind of like the, uh, the special like Eastern Cavalry or Eastern European Cavalry. And again, they're, they're pretty good. There's not many of them, but they're, they're really good because of that. I think there's only like 50 of them in a unit. Yeah, there's only 50 of them in a unit, and they're pretty strong. And I put some experience on my cavalry as well. If we look at Haxo's Hungarian army, which does actually outnumber me by like 2,000 men, which is pretty scary, considering we spent the same amount of money. We have the awesome-looking Hungarian knights. These dudes are just spectacular. There's a reason why Hungary was my favorite faction for quite a while, and it's because of these knights. And the Pavis, obviously, they look so sick. 
They really, really do. And I, I'm pretty scared seeing these guys on the battlefield for sure. Then Haxo has uh, some weaker cavalry over here. He has, uh, what are these guys? A mounted sergeant. So these shot cavalry or melee cavalry? These are actually melee cavalry. And in this mod, melee cavalry doesn't do too well. But Haxo wanted to try them out and see what they're like. Uh, so he has another unit of melee cavalry there. Then if we look at his front line, he has a huge moot shield of about 800 armed peasants, which he's going to use just to kind of absorb ammunition and absorb charges, which is very smart considering I have a lot of infantry which can throw stuff. So having these armored uh, peasants just laying around is going to be, you know, invaluable for sure to absorb that. Then if we look back, we can see that he has brought some uh, spear militia. Again, a weaker unit. That's what we wanted to go for in this battle, not just all heavy tiered units. So we have some spear militia. We'll get a nice it will zoom in on them so they have some armor nothing too crazy no plate by the looks of it but overall okay then he has uh, one unit of these pavis oh my god they're just so good looking literally just look at them you cannot you, you can barely even see their heads just because of the sheer amount of just the largeness of their shields i absolutely love the patterns on the shields as well it's really really nice one of my favorite units in the game for sure uh, and then some more spear militia and then finally another unit of hungarian pavis these dudes are a force to be reckoned with for, for sure. Then behind that, he has four units of these crossbowmen. So he's going to try and use a decent range force to try and penetrate my heavily armored troops. And especially in the type of battle we're playing, where we're having you know several sets of formations, several lines in our in our formation. You know, having this unit just to shoot the reserves is going to be good. Then behind that, he has a uh, several units of. Uh, Hungarian sergeants. These are the early period, so these guys are pretty lightly armored. But again, we don't really, I don't know if I've actually ever seen this unit before. So the fact that you know we're, we're using these cool units is actually showing some real nice gems. Like this infantry unit's really cool. And when the campaign's actually released, I guess this is the type of stuff you'll be using straight away. You know, as, as you start off before you even get any other units. You know, like these uh, late sergeants of these late. Oh, these are high sergeants. Yeah. So these are the type of units, you know, because you don't really get to see them too much. And these are some really nice models, really nice models. I like them for sure. So yeah, as I said, he has like five or six of them. And then behind that, he has his sergeants of the late period. So they've got more armor, better shields, better helmets, and just better overall. So these guys are going to be uh, very, very potent. We're going to have to try and deal with them. Then behind that, he finally has, you know, four more units of peasant archers. And then some more mounted sergeants. Uh, what is this unit? Is this a shock unit? This is, right? Some more Hungarian knights of a high period, whereas the other ones are of a late. And then some more melee cavalry over here. So cool, let's go and get started. Uh, let's go ahead and click play. And we'll watch as this battle gets underway. So we didn't want to just kind of like abuse the hill. Uh, I, I still didn't mind fighting uphill. But we, like, obviously if we were playing competitively, Haxo could have just taken that hill. But we didn't want that, so we decided just to fight in this open slope right here. And believe it should be pretty good. So if you guys notice from the army comp, Haxo has a ton of cavalry. His six units, not including his general. So that's going to be pretty scary for me. Luckily, some of it is melee cavalry, which we've mentioned isn't the best in this mod, which is really a shame. I feel like melee cavalry should be a lot better than it is because it's melee cavalry. It should be good in combat. Uh, in a prolonged combat. However, it just always seems to lose out to shock cavalry. Um, so yeah, the amount of cavalry Haxo has is somewhat scary, but I have a lot of spearmen. As you guys can see, uh, I have two units of spearmen on each flank, plus another unit of spear militia. So these guys are going to be engaging the enemy when the, when the cavalry engage. So I'm going to use my cavalry to force an engagement, and then I'm going to pile in my spear militia. Because again, another thing in this mod is if you try to uh, pull out your, your cavalry from an engagement, or I guess anything from an actual engagement, they take a ton of casualties. So you have to be really careful with when you decide to actually uh, commit to a battle because you're going to be kind of stuck there unless you have more reinforcements coming in or something along those lines. So at the moment, to start off this battle, I'm just going to be peppering away at his uh, spear militia. I mean, that is peasant armed peasantry. Which is kind of what he wanted to happen anyway, uh, because the more of these guys that die, you know, it's more arrows that I waste. You can see I tried to try and get a sneaky charge off on his cavalry, but Haxo is going to see that and then just move his cavalry right around the flanks. Which is going to uh, kind of put me at a bit of a disadvantage, because it means that I am, uh, I am kind of forced to play reactionary, because I'm having to kind of form up. To where his cavalry goes because he does have so much more cavalry so i try my best to try and catch one of these off guard with moving my boyars into the range of the hungarians because he has four units of cavalry on this flank you know that's scary 
but Haxo does manage just to get out of there in time. As I advance, Haxo is going to be running forward these uh, these armed peasantry, which really are not going to do jack shit. Uh, they are going to get died. They're just more of an annoyance, if anything else. My formation is going to move up. Uh, I think I just march these guys into combat, if I'm honest, because I'm just that I'm just not really scared whatsoever. And they should just cut these guys down. Oh my god, they actually form up. That's hilarious. I didn't actually realize that this is what happened. I thought they fought and I just lost because I was busy focusing on the cavalry engagement, which has just happened actually. We'll pause it. But that's hilarious that these guys got stuck point blank and we just didn't engage. We just, they just got slaughtered from me throwing javelins at them. That's hilarious. That is really, really funny. So if we look back at the cavalry engagement, I've kind of done what I wanted to do here. I managed to force Haxo's cavalry to commit to an engagement, and then the same over here as well. I forced him to engage this cavalry engagement behind enemy lines as well. This is something a lot of a lot of people do: is they force a, a, a cavalry engagement like behind the enemy lines, and that means look how far away Haxo's army is compared to how far away my army is. That allows me to then commit my spearmen to this engagement, and Haxo can't really do much about this now. Because he's so far behind enemy lines, he's kind of forced to uh, forced to kind of just take this because he can withdraw his cavalry and a lot of them would die as they try and retreat. Or he can just kind of sit here and hope he kills enough of my cavalry uh, or does enough damage on my cavalry so that his, uh, his infantry can kill me uh, quicker than I can kill his cavalry. Because I'm being able to commit a lot of troops from my army, I'm just committing them to these engagements. You can see more of my armoured spears coming in to support my cavalry against the Hungarians. And again, this is really good. This is exactly what I needed, you know. Haxo having six units of cavalry was super scary. But being able to cut them down like this, being able to ward them off from the rest of his army is really benefiting me right now. So then I decided that the cavalry engagement is kind of is going my way. So I'm going to push forward and I'm going to charge against Haxo's infantry line. I'm going to do that first with just using my noble warriors. Try and break this line of Pavis. I don't really fancy fighting the Pavis too much. Like, I don't think I'm going to win in that battle. But around the rest of the line, you know, these noble warriors should be able to cut down the spear militia without too much trouble. You know, it's low, low tier spear infantry isn't too much of an issue for me, I don't think. You can see my secondary line forming up as well. The battle looking very cool. I do definitely love the rain as well. Uh, I, I really have been trying to make... Uh, make more of like more use of the weather system in this game for sure and hopefully you guys appreciate that and like that if you are enjoying this battle make sure to drop a like and a comment down below uh, i do upload videos every single day so if you are interested in total war strategy games in general make sure to hit that subscribe button and also make sure to drop a like down below as it really does help out the channel so at the moment, I have kind of filled a few gaps. There was a few gaps appearing in my line. I decided to uh, push in one of my armored warriors, especially against this unit of Pavis. I knew that I needed something a little bit stronger than the noble warriors to actually take care of them. So I did end up pushing in uh, a unit of these armored warriors. But I think even these guys aren't a match for Pavis. They just—they got so much heavy armor. They really need like—they uh, really need some armor-piercing unit to, to defeat them. If we look back at the cavalry, I even committed my general, I believe, over here now. So my general, yeah, you can see he's the unit with the axes. Uh, I had to commit my general because I want to try and win this battle as soon as possible. I know that if we fight in a prolonged infantry engagement, Haxo will probably win that. So because of that, I'm trying to win the cavalry fight as quickly as possible. Because I have all these spears, you know, we're fighting behind enemy lines for Haxo. So because of that, you can see, you can hear already that the, the infantry engagement is not going super in my favor. So I want to try and win this cavalry engagement as quickly as physically possible so that then the cavalry can go support my line. Because if I just leave my line to fight by itself... Oh, that dude just got kicked by the horse! That's sick! That was sick! That was awesome! Wow! I haven't seen that animation in forever. I wasn't even expecting it. Uh, so yeah, I want to try and win this uh, cavalry engagement quickly, which I am kind of doing, which is nice. But if we go back to the infantry fight... You can see it's in full swing right now. We've got my armoured swords against Haxo's sergeants of the late period. He's trying to use his elite infantry to get around the flank, which is a very smart idea. Especially over here, I've had to commit a unit of my axemen to fight these guys, which obviously are not going to be a match for them. They're way too much. Like, look at the armour compared. Like, compare the two units and look at the, the armour. These guys are much, much stronger uh, for sure. And he's going to get another charge in on my infantry here. Going to pull them back and charge. I believe that, yeah, he's slowly cutting these guys down. So many decapitations going on right now. 
Oh, that guy just got stabbed in the stomach. Nice. Yeah, so we did actually manage to win that. I had to go then, obviously, commit another unit of my heavy infantry. Because uh, I don't want him outflanking me, which he is obviously trying to do right here. As he just win there. He's going to form up again. I think he's going to form shield wall. And my armored swords are just going to get here ready to charge when the time is right. The battle line is furious. Look at that. Oh, I love Total War. This is what Total War is all about for me. So one of my armored swords did actually route, which was really unfortunate. But we did then resupply with another unit of armored swords here. But yeah, as I said, these armored swords breaking is really bad for me. I'm having to fill this gap with these noble swords, which is exactly what I didn't want to have uh, have happen. But, you know, I've kind of, it's kind of forced my hand actually doing this. But my cavalry has won. You can see I'm throwing my cavalry right around these flanks immediately. If we look at the balance of power right now, it's pretty even. Haxel has the infantry, I have the cavalry. Uh, you know, we're very similar man counts. He's obviously lost a lot of his peasants. So I want to make sure I try and kill as many of these archers as possible. Because really, that's the only way Haxo can win right now. Is if these archers do uh, do work and, and slaughter me. Because you, you can saw, saw how much damage they did to the armored swordsmen on that right flank. So I'm going to be pushing in my cavalry here as best as possible on every flank. To try and uh, keep up the pressure. If I can get them from at least stop shooting. I don't have to kill them. I just have to get them to stop shooting then victory can definitely uh, be in my grasp for sure. These Hungarian uh, early sergeants look really cool. Like, I love their shields. I really do. Can't believe I've never seen this unit before. That's what I'm saying. I, I love playing in the, the early period because there's just so many awesome, awesome things which you don't really get to see too much. Or just getting at least somewhat of the, the earlier units is really, really cool. So again, more of my infantry is starting to break. But I did just bring in a ton of my spearmen now. You can see that my, I've got some men. These guys are exhausted because they've just been fighting cavalry. But I've got four units of fresh spearmen here. The battle was looking very good for Lithuania. We just need to keep pushing, keep true to our, ourselves <laughs> and to our general. And victory will be here. It will be ours. But we still do have to fight through some of these pavis. Which again are not going to be giving us an easy job. Oh, look at the Lithuanian swords as well. Some of them have a lot shorter swords. That's interesting. Yeah, look at that. That dude right there has... Yeah, these guys have, like, much shorter swords than the, the traditional weapon I'm used to seeing on them. You know, because these guys have longer swords. So that's kind of cool that they're, they're changing them up. That's something uh, the Seven Kingdoms mod has done a lot as well, the Game of Thrones mod. They've started adding a lot more weapons, which I think is really cool. I think it makes each faction feel a lot more unique. And 12-12's uh, done this as well, obviously, with Epirus. I've noticed that on them. You know, just oh, every faction not having the identical sword, I think, adds a lot to the realism of the battle. You can see that my cavalry is going down. I think Haxo has had to commit his Hungarian general. Look at them shields, though. These dudes are awesome. They're in full play armor. War hammers at the ready, just like, smashing anyone's chest. They've got maces as well. These guys are not to be messed with whatsoever. Luckily, I do have spears, which are going to be good at fighting them and actually killing their horses and stuff. But that Hungarian general is awesome. Love these shields. If we look at this, I think I've had to commit my spear infantry as well. Yeah, I've thrown in my spear infantry just to reinforce my lines. And the battle is looking very much in my favor. If we take a little glimpse out, we can see the engagement from a distance. Uh, yeah, I'm slowly closing in, especially after throwing my general in over here to help me out. Uh, my Hungarian, I mean, my armored cavalry is actually doing kind of decently against his general. I would have thought his general would have done a lot better. But I guess he was fighting two units of cavalry. Haxo managed to route one of my units of cavalry. The men are regrouping now. We pretty much surrounded these pavis. We just need to keep on, keep on attacking, keep on putting the pressure on, and try and break these pavis. Because these pavis are not going to break easily. That is for sure. As well as that, he does also have a unit of uh, spear militia, I guess, supported by his armored swords or his sergeants of the late period, I should say. Basically, our armored swords. I love the sergeants as well. For the Hungarians and the Lithuanians. They're actually, the, they're actually like the same look. They've got kind of like the same capes and stuff. So they've just got different shields. Hungarian one has more of a kite shield. I did then just throw my general and supported the rest of my uh, my cavalry with another unit coming back from killing a lot of the, the routed missiles. Because again, I really didn't want the, the missiles to come back to this battle because they could definitely have caused me some issues. 
So I let my cavalry kind of chase after them as we move back to fighting the Hungarian king. Which I believe is in here somewhere. Uh, he must have died. Yeah, he must have died. And that would have caused the mass rout for the rest of the battle. So this was a short battle. I normally do a lot longer battles. Uh, I think two days ago, I did an hour and a half long siege battle at River Run. Uh, or not at River Run. But we tried, me and Apollo tried to create an epic, like, 18,000 1000 man River Run battle. So make sure to go on my channel if you, if you haven't already and check that out. Uh, we'll go look at the kills uh, to see what units really went in. Uh, and straight off the bat, you can see one of my units of armored cavalry got 402 kills. A lot of them would have been missiles, uh, but, you know, being able to get behind enemy lines and kind of do that damage was really good. I was actually really impressed by my noble swords. Considering they're only tier 2, um, I was really, really impressed with how many kills they actually got. They did a very good job indeed. I think a lot of them kills were on the spear militia. Which Haxo brought, which didn't really do too great of a job, uh, for sure. Yeah, you can see. Actually, some of them doing okay. 36 kills is, is okay. Um, but yeah, they, they did really, really good. I was happy with them. Even some of my Axemen doing good. 187 kills. That's pretty impressive. Obviously, my cavalry wrecking. If we look at Haxos, you can definitely see his Sergeants of the High Period doing really well. Um, I mean, these archers didn't look like they did too much. But again, you got to remember, they only cost like 100 gold. And then finally, his Pavis doing really good as well. His cavalry just really let him down. This melee cavalry is just so bad. It really is, and it's such a shame. Hopefully, they do change this, because at the moment, melee cavalry is just, just utter shit. So I'm hoping that it will make these guys better uh, as we get closer and closer to the final release of this mod. So, uh, yeah, make sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this battle. And uh, also, send me any replays you guys have. If you've got a replay for any any Total War game, send it into the description, uh, to the email address down below, and I'll be sure to at least look at it um, if I do need a replay for the day for sure. Uh, but yeah, as I said, make sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this battle. I'll see you guys next time, and fish out.